Most goggles don't come with the battery included when you buy them. And then you have to find the best way to power your goggles for the longest time that you can if you want to have long sessions or so on. Today I want to talk to you about the ways that I power my goggles and what I, what I found during the time of around 3-4 years flying FPV and what works for me. So maybe you have a good idea what you can get for you in the future. In other videos I've been talking about that my preferred way to charge or to power my goggle has been this case that holds two 18650 batteries and recently it got broken so I needed to find a way to replace this or to see what I could do about it. I have another one of these ones as a backup, but I thought that it was a good moment to explore other options. And I found a couple of interesting things that I want to share with you. Let's just give a few seconds to my sponsor and then we get to it. Do you need a good service to print your circuit boards? I'm sure PCBWay will have the right solution for you at the best price. They don't only have different kinds of PCB like Flex PCB and Advanced PCB, but now you can get your circuit boards with higher TG at the same price. Imagine that. Remember, PCB Way can help you with many other services. Go and visit them at their website. And right now it's the eighth anniversary and have a lot of promotions ongoing. The idea of using a pair of 18650 came from when I bought my first pair of goggles, the Fat Shark. HDO2 and they came with this case which is exactly the same thing that I showed you before. This case got broken very soon uh, and I had to replace it since I was so happy with the way that it worked because it's light it gives me with two of these batteries you get something between 2,000 and 3,000 million per hours which give you at least a, for me a full day of flying maybe even a couple of days. So I thought that way to hold the batteries was good enough. Then I went to the internet and I found this one, the E-Chine e model. I bought it from Banggood and it was essentially the same thing with the difference that you could recharge the batteries directly with the case, from the case. You have a USB port here, you uh, connect your USB cable and then you charge this. Everything was working fine until that point that that case broke. And then again, I started to check what was on the internet and I found something that could be very interesting for many of you. This one is a battery pack. Even if the size is not huge, it holds 20,000 million per hours which is a huge amount. I'm guessing that with that you can fly for many weeks, if not months. Since I bought it, I haven't recharged it yet and I've been flying not super often, but I've been flying quite a lot indoors um, and I still haven't charged it again. This battery pack has different outputs. It has USB-A and USB-C and even, I believe, not this one, but there are some others very similar that has uh, micro USB. The important point here is that in order to power your goggles, you need enough power, enough voltage and current so your, your goggles can work. And that only happens if these power supplies or these power banks, they are what they call PD model. If you look at the back of this power bank, you will see that the output through USB-C, you have three different options. You have DC 5 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 2.2, and 12 volts at 1.5. Then you have to make sure that your goggles, depending on which one you're using, can support any of those combinations because then you're going to be able to charge it from that power bank. From the ones that I have, I have the Voxnail goggles, I have the DJI goggles, and I have the Fat Shark goggles. And all of them goes from a range of 2S to minimum 5S for the Voxnail and 6S for the DJI and the Fat Shark. 2S, it's something around 8, 9 volts. 
6S is something around 22 volts, depending if you have it fully charged or not, the battery. I found another model, very similar in terms of how it works, but this one, this power bank here is a little bit smaller. The reason why I went and I bought this one is because I like the idea of having the battery hanging on the strap. So this one fits on my straps. My straps are flexible. They have a flexible uh, holder so you can put it in and then I can still keep it on my head. The big one, I have to have it on my pocket and then I need to have a long cable hanging from the side of me and sometimes I hit the cable and I'm not so comfortable with it. It works. And I know a lot of people would like to have it like that, especially thinking that they don't have to recharge the battery in a very long time. But I wanted to test something like this. This one is 10,000 million per hour, which again, it should give me kind of good time it's still something around three times these small ones but uh, in the with the kind of the same size so it should work for a few weeks at least i haven't tested all the time again i bought it i haven't recharged this and i've been using it for a few weeks and still going the tricky part with these power banks comes um, around the cable the thing is, as I mentioned before, you have three kind of different outputs from the USB-C port, but how do you choose what to give to your goggles? If you give too much power, you might kill the goggles. Here's one thing that you have to think about. The new DJI goggles, the DJI 2 goggles, they operate only between seven and nine volts which means that if you get one of these power banks and you manage to power those goggles from them and you output the wrong amount, you might burn those goggles. So let's go back. How do you give the right power to your goggles from this and make sure that you are not doing anything wrong? There is where the tricky part comes and is the cable is the key here. You might not think about it because the cable is a USB-C to a barrel 5.5 and all the cables look kind of the same, right? But in the USB-C standard, all the cables are not made the same. And especially these ones where you are going to give power. These cables are called USB-C PD cables and the PD is the one that is going to let the unit that you are feeding know how many volts you are going to be providing. So when you're going to buy these cables, you have to make sure that the output of them is the amount that you want. Not very difficult, right? But the problem again is that if you go to different sites and different manufacturers, they are kind of not very up to date with all this and they, some of them, they don't give you the information about how much the cable is going to output. Some of them give you the wrong information. I'm going to tell you. My first cable, I bought it without knowing much about this of the PED and when I got it and I plugged it to my goggles, nothing happened. And I was wondering what the hell was happening. Took my multimeter and I checked and there was zero volts. The cable was not PED, so there has no way to communicate with the power bank and let know how much power it has to provide. Then I went and I bought the second cable, this one that I have here. I bought it now with the PED thing in mind and I chose from one manufacturer that said that this cable will provide nine volts. Nine volts is the safest for all of these goggles that are in the market, including the DJI 2, if it had the right barrel connector. But anyway, nine volts was a good idea on number for all my goggles. I bought the cable PD standard, nine volts. I got it, I measured with my multimeter and surprise surprise i got 12 volts so probably was an error from the manufacturer still 12 volt work fine with the goggles that i have so i don't care it's working and everything is fine 
but I found the cable to be a little bit short if I want to have my battery on my pocket. So I went and I bought another cable from the same website, from the same manufacturer, again choosing nine volts. And when I got this cable, the new one, two meters long, it was providing only five volts. So again, you, the key for this kind of power supplies or power banks to be used with the goggles is this little cable. They are not cheap. They are between 15 and $20 or something around that. And as I'm saying, I tried from different places. I tried from the same places and the description was something and I got something different. So that's the part that it's a little bit tricky when you are going to choose one of these power banks. The second thing that you have to think or keep in mind when buying one of these ones is that the kind of battery that you use on this case is Leon batteries. The kind of batteries that are on these power banks is actually LiPo batteries. And if we have learned something on the FPV hobby is that you have to be a little bit more careful how you treat your LiPo batteries in order for them not to get damaged. So we know that going all the way down and discharging them all the way down is not a good idea. Keeping them fully charged is not a good idea either. That means that whenever you are using these, you have to pay attention about the charging. There is a cool thing in both models that I bought, that is the fact that they provide you the, the capacity or the charge that the battery has. So you have an idea how much they have. But then again, if you want to keep good care of your power bank, then you have to pay attention that they stay all the time around the 70% or you don't leave them too long fully charged or fully discharged and it's these kind of things that you have to think a little bit extra that I never had to think about when I had these ones. These ones, even if some people say that you have to pay attention similarly to what you have to do with the LiPo, I, I, don't, I don't do it. I, these ones are charged and discharged and I don't care how long they are in my bag or with or without charge and nothing ever has happened to one of those batteries. With the LiPo batteries, they, you know, they expand, they swallow or they get damaged. It might be that it's not a big problem in one of these ones since you don't need to get like a super good performance out of the battery because you're just powering the goggle. But still, we know because of the hobby that they don't behave the same way. It's something to keep in mind. Still, I'm super happy that I found these ones because they last forever. And again, if you compare the size of this and this to have in my head, it's pretty good. It, this one is a little bit heavier, but I'm very happy with what I found. What do you think about them? Let me know in the comments down here. And this is what I have for you today. I hope that you enjoy it and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.